In this video, as a follow-up to our popular strawberry wine video, we're going to make a strawberry mead. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Okay, to make our strawberry mead, we will be using the following ingredients. Anywhere between three to five pounds of strawberries, fresh, frozen, or whatever. I'm going to actually be using four pounds for this recipe. We're going to use three pounds of honey. I'm going to be using Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast. If you don't have it, use whatever you got. I'm going to be using straining bags this time. We're going to be using enough water to get to bring our level up to at least one gallon. We need something to do primary fermentation in, in which case I needed something that's going to have a wide mouth opening so I can put in those straining bags. We're going to need something to do secondary fermentation in. Jug, jar, demijohn, carboy, take your pick. We need an airlock with stopper for that. We are going to be using a hydrometer to let us know what our initial gravity reading is going to be and at the end what our final gravity reading ended up being so we can determine how much alcohol is going to be in our wine. And before we do anything, we're going to start to make sure that everything has been sanitized, which in my case, I'm going to be using star sands. You can use whatever sanitation method you choose, but it helps to have a very clean environment before you start making your meat. Now I'm using fresh strawberries, or rather they were fresh before I decided to give them a good rinse and then put them in the freezer until I was ready to use. What I neglected to do was that I should have removed the foliage on top of the strawberries. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and we'll go ahead and move on from there. Yeah. Let's put those over here. All right, with that being done, we're going to go ahead and give these one more good rinse before we put them in the straining bags. Now, one good thing about using fresh fruit or frozen fruit or fresh fruit and then freezing the fruit is that when you thaw them out, the fruit itself, in this case the strawberries, are now nice and soft. They're not firm like they would be if they were just something fresh fruit, which is great because if they were just fresh alone, we would probably have to chop these berries up before we put them in the put them in the fermenter. Instead, all I'm going to do is that I'm going to get them in the straining bag hole, straining bags hole, and I'm just going to give them a quick mash with a potato masher. Let's see, I've got three bags, so that should be enough. Go ahead and give that a quick tie. Get the fingers out the way that aren't being used. And yeah, I could just drop them in the, in the fermenter, call it a day. But I want to break down this structure just a little bit more by giving it just a quick little mash. And then, without making a mess, get them in our fermenter. And repeat the process till we get all the berries in. Now I've taken the opportunity to warm up our three pounds of honey so they'll flow more easily out of the bottles. And I've also warmed up 10 cups of water, which was what we're going to need to give us our full gallon, not including what we've got in terms of strawberry juice. Now what I want to do now is to go ahead and mix the honey and water together. And yeah, I could have done it in the fermenter first and then put in the strawberries, but it really doesn't matter either way. Once 
One of our subscribers showed me a trick of actually using a straw, inserting a straw down to the side to give the mixture air so that it can flow more easily through the funnel. Unfortunately, I don't have any straws. And the one, well, I don't, I've got straws, but they're real big and they're real thick and they're silicone. And what I really needed was just a regular plastic straw, but I was trying to get away from plastic straws. And I'm gonna rinse what remains of the honey in those bottles a little bit later on. Because all I wanna do now at this point is put the cap on. And let's go ahead and and get this mixture mixed up. Yeast will enjoy that. Okay. With that having been done, all we need to do at this point is to go ahead and add that to our fermenter. Not a little bit of a swirl, I could have stirred it. Because what I want to do now is I want to take a hydrometer reading. Yeah, I know it's got a spigot. Yeah, I know all I needed to do basically was just to turn the spigot to pour, to pour it in there. But you might not have one on whatever container you're using. So... I don't mind taking the opportunity to use plan B. Ooh, okay. Filling to the top is not going to be required. All right, it's riding kind of high. It looks like 1.1. Looks like 1.104. It's going to be our hydrometer reading. In a moment, I'm going to pour that back in. And we are going to, no, better yet, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to pour that back in. I'm going to take out my hydrometer carefully. I'm going to take some of our must and I'm going to pour it in a bowl and I'm going to add our yeast and we're going to bloom our yeast. I think this time I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of, of wine yeast as opposed to my normal one quarter of a teaspoon Because a half a teaspoon is about all I've got left in this bag. So let's just go ahead and get that going. And besides, it's good because the honey and the water are still kind of warm. So we'll go ahead and let that uh, do its thing for the next few minutes. And then we'll add that to our strawberry honey juice mixture. And begin the process of converting that into wine. All right, now that our yeast has begun showing signs of life, it's time to go ahead and add that to our fermenter. And oh, by the way, yes, that is a continuity error. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and add our yeast. And because a lot of it is just floating on top of the straining bags, let's go ahead and just incorporate the yeast a little bit more into the mix. Want to put on our cap? Doesn't have to be on there tight. Oh, by the again, by the way, again, this uh, particular fermenter does have an air vent, so that uh, I don't have to worry about pressure building up. But right now, I'm more interested in the yeast being able to get as much oxygen as possible. 
It is now time to label our creation. What we've got here is strawberry mead, started on the 13th of this year, and an OG reading, I corrected OG reading of 1.116. Despite what I said earlier, let's go ahead and label that real quick. All right, all we need to do is to, for the next three to five days, go ahead and give it a little stir to add a little bit more oxygen to the mix. The yeast will appreciate that. After that, we want to rack this into our secondary and begin the long haul process of secondary fermentation. One year from now, it's strawberry mead time. Where's my wine glass? So there we go, strawberry mead. Okay, this is going to be a 16 month taste testing of a batch of strawberry mead that I made. Uh, it completely slipped my mind to do a video at the 12 month mark. This being the sole survivor of the five bottle batch that I made. Apparently I have been drinking it over the past, uh, oh, six months at least. I don't remember what it tastes like, but it must have tasted pretty good because I went through four of those bottles. The fact that this one has a cap on it <laughs> basically means for me that uh, this was a bottle that I was going to save for special guest. Well, I think you as my, as my viewers, you all are special guests. So we're going to crack open my last bottle of strawberry mead whilst I contemplate the purchase of some additional honey and strawberries <laughs> to, uh, to make the next batch happen. Um, Again, I'm going to try and get right to this one. And although I've got the proper waiter's key to do it, normally I don't go through this process here of scoring the top of the cap, of which I think I'm doing a halfway job of it, before inserting the corkscrew end of it. Normally I just go for the corkscrew and the cap generally comes off with it, top of the cap comes off with it. So using the waiter's key instead of my winged corkscrew, which is what I'd rather be using for this reason. And that's why I like using my winged corkscrew because this doesn't happen all that often. I mean, it happens, but it doesn't happen all that often. So let's, uh, let's try that one again. <laughs> I see daylight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this one doesn't want to give up the goods all that easy. You got to work with it. You got to finesse it. You got to talk to it. <laughs> all right. A couple of things. One, having stirred up a little bit of sediment that was on there. Uh, strawberry me, born 1, 2021. AVB came in at a healthy 15%. Okay. Uh, and it's been pasteurized. I also know it's been pasteurized in the bottle and not in the cardboard because I've got all this sediment sitting on the bottom of my, uh, my, my, uh, my, my bottle. But that being said, let's go ahead and crack open a little taste. I'm not too concerned about the sediment. It's just honey solid, sort of separated out. I'll deal with that later. Uh, apart from the solids that are sitting in the bottom of the bottle. Actually, they're kind of floating up a bit. Uh, the wine is clear. Uh, it's not a sparkling wine, <laughs> which was which was the intent. Uh, no surprises there. Um, you don't really smell the alcohol. Actually, you smell the strawberries pretty strongly. Hmm, okay. Uh, you don't know until you taste it if it's good or not. Must have been good because I had drank four bottles prior to this one. So let's see how it tasted 16 months. I can say right now from the onset, at uh, what, January of 2021, I was still using more than twice the amount of uh, acidity that I think I should have been using. So if I was using a half a lemon at that time as my uh, acid blend substitute, I would definitely cut that in half to my quarter of a lemon or squeeze of a quarter of a lemon, which has become my new standard. Apart from that, it's pretty smooth. I 
Not too much of a honey finish at all. Which for a maid you would expect, but no, not too much of a honey finish here. Strawberries, definitely. Gives the right amount of strawberries in this batch. It's got a nice crisp taste to it. Uh, when I did a taste testing comparison between a pasteurized mead and an unpasteurized mead, the pasteurized meads came in at just a little bit softer of a, of a, of a, of a taste as opposed to the unpasteurized mead. But this one still has a nice crisp flavor to it. I think one thing that I was not doing at this time when I was making this batch was that I was not using a, a homemade yeast nutrient or a yeast nutrient of any sort. But once I realized just how simple it was to make a yeast nutrient, uh, all of my subsequent wines and meads are now using that. So definitely I would, make, I would add that to the mix. Reduce the acidity, use the homemade yeast nutrient. Um, yeah, uh, one other thing uh, prior to me starting this video or realizing that I needed to do this video, I was tasting up, or rather finishing up the last of a two year batch of plum wine. And I was perusing through my content, my uh, content to find out what I need to do to make that uh, uh, initial video plus the add on of the uh, tasting video. And I stumbled across this one thinking that I'd already done a, a standalone tasting video in and of itself. But nope, turns out this is one that got missed. Uh, don't know why, and I'm glad I did it before I consumed this last bottle or gave it away. Doubt that I would have given it away. <laughs> this was one I would have shared among friends. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I like this. And the funny thing is, you don't really smell the alcohol, even at 15%. I will feel it later, I'm sure. <laughs> but no, uh, you don't really taste it, or rather smell it. You kind of sort of taste it. It's probably why you're not really, why I'm not really getting a, a, a lot of that honey forward flavor. Uh, in order of priorities, strawberries definitely, well, Strawberries, acidity. I would have to say the alcohol and honey come through kind of equally. They kind of balance each other out. I would have preferred a much more honey forward, uh, forwarded mead, but this ain't bad at all. Yeah, this ain't bad at all. Uh, if you've never really given mead a try, uh, basically, it's just like, just like making wine, except that you're using honey instead of sugar. Basically, that's pretty much the real fundamental difference. And, um, and um, yeah, it's definitely worth the effort. Uh, most, of, most of what I have made, if I had to uh, make, give it a choice between which do I prefer, uh, wines or meads, I've made some pretty decent wines, <laughs> to be sure. And I've also made more pretty decent meads. In fact, it's kind of hard to get them... That corn habanero, and what was the other ingredient? <laughs> the oddity that I did uh, uh, well, some time back, that was a strange one. That's probably one that didn't quite work out. But beyond that, it's kind of hard to mess up a bead. So with that being said, short video, because uh, I know the original video kind of ran a little bit long. Uh, strawberry mead, definitely a winner. I like it a lot. And if you've seen my videos, you know that if I don't like it, I'm going to let you know about it. <laughs> Not everything I make is going to be all that great. So, um, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, we'll definitely be making it again. Uh, not on camera. This was more like personal consumption. I might end up making, I want to say I want to make like two gallons-ish. But, honey, I, this, is, this is still a channel that tries to do things on a shoestring budget. So, honey is kind of on the, on the pricey side. So, two gallons... <laughs> If I'm feeling, if I want to treat myself, okay. But uh, um, there you go. Uh, strawberry meat, uh, 16 months tasting. Last bottle out of four. Uh, definitely a winner. And I will see you in the next video.